Dima, Seven Poems of Alexander Bloch by Dmitry Shostakovich. This is an extraordinary piece, no? Absolutely, and I have a direct connection to the premiere because I was in Moscow in 1967. It was in October. It was a momentous occasion because 50 years since October Revolution. And uh, Shostakovich, of course, ha always had to write something to commemorate such occasion. But instead, not for the first time... There's not time, very much rejoicing in this none, piece. None whatsoever. The only connection to the October Revolution is really Alexander Bloch, because he was there at that time, and while he was a, certainly a very different kind of poet than Mayakovsky, but for he was taken by the revolution, and he, he even wrote a poem about revolution, but he, he had Jesus Christ marching in front of it, which put him in, under big question big mark. Suspicion. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, he was a remarkable uh, figure, very um, romantic, also symbolism. This, this piece is full, full of symbolism. But it's also tremendously dark, isn't very it? Very dark, uh, which reflects really the late works of Shostakovich. And he was, at the end of his life, first of all, he was always thinking about death. Mm -hmm. 14th Symphony was all about death. This is very close to that. And also the second violin concerto, which he wrote the same year for David Oyster, and second cello concerto. They're dark, very different pieces from their uh, you know, companions, first cello, first violin concerto, different. But he really specifically wrote to his favorite performers. As I mentioned, you know, second violin concerto was for Oyster, second cello concerto was for Rostropovich, and this cycle was for the illustrious wife of, of Rostropovich, Alina Vishnevskaya. It was dedicated for her. The way he, uh, of course, he decided to uh, orchestrate it is not just a cycle, piano, trio, and voice. In fact, we only meet at the violinist, cellist, pianist, and the singer only meet together once in the last movement that's called music. Otherwise, he rings the changes. Every the possible combination, cello and voice, piano and voice, violin and voice, that every trio and all that. And that is quite unique. I don't know any other cycle. And then, of course, he he was, I mentioned that I was at the premiere, of course. You were a baby then, weren't you? Not exactly. I, I knew what I was uh, attending. I was 13 at that time. So I, I knew what we what we were witnessing. Every every Shostakovich premiere was a great occasion. And somehow, maybe because there were three most celebrated uh, instrumentalists, everybody knew, we knew somehow, of course, it was going to be Rostropovich, David Oyster, and we sort of expected Richter to come out sure. and play. But no, it was a very close friend, now much celebrated composer, Mieczysław Weinberg. Weinberg yeah. He played the piano. It's interesting that the Russian premiere, the world premiere, and then six months later or so, in the summer in Oldenburg, they did it with Benjamin Britten playing now the piano. So he had two great composers playing piano. I'm sure if it were early, he would have played it himself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But it's a remarkable work, I think, very much sort of, you know, resonates with the... Uh, darkest year we all just lived, 2020, where everything was, you know, and I thought it was such a great opportunity to discover a new venue, this beautiful recital hall of the Razumovsky Academy. Where, great pleasure to be here. Really, Wonderful. and we, we felt so welcome. And we have, of course, we're just two talking, but of course, it's a wonderful cellist, Tim Hugh, Tim Hugh. who is, you know, I know him since... He reminded me that he played at that time with BBC Symphony when I recorded both Shostakovich Concerti with Andrew Davis last century, <laughs> 89 or something, 80, 1989. So he is a fa in a fantastic shape and it sounds great. And in the meantime, my little daughter, who is now... She's a big opera star. She's, she's not so big, little anymore. Exactly. Now she is a you know yeah. wonderful partner and it's a great joy. So it becomes sort of a friendly and family indeed, affair. Indeed. Yeah, so I hope the listeners will be able to get something out of their own extraordinary, very symbolic poems. There's one about prophetic bird. There's one about 
you know, Ophelia's song. There's one about secret signs. But the most important thing, and I think it's symbolic, that no matter what happens in the world, the last moment when we all come together, music unites us all and hopefully will save us. We can all drink to that. Thank you very much, Dean. Thank you.